so this video has no format, no script, no organization. This is truly off the cuff. This is how I moved to New York in two weeks. Everybody needs to sit down, grab a drink, because it was a journey. It's been a journey. I haven't even been here a month yet. And I'm about to take you for a ride. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Madeline. If you are new here, please go ahead and subscribe if you aren't already. As I prefaced, I recently moved to New York City, so that's kind of been my content focus as of recent. Um, I work in New York fashion, and I'm just documenting my life along the way. I'm all cozy, I've got my loungewear on, I'm ready. Got the wine. I think it goes without saying, but the title kind of addresses this. This is for those who are brand new to New York, or are moving from far away to New York, or you just got your first job after college in New York because that is what I am going through. In this video, I want to be as realistic and honest as possible. Um, I'm an open book, so we're going to be talking about finances, numbers. So if you're looking to move to New York, moving forward in this video, just think about your situation and how you would apply what I'm saying to your situation. I also just want to say if you're a New Yorker, if you've lived in New York for a few years, if you know a lot about living in New York, this is my journey. This is what I have experienced. I'm not going to get everything absolutely correct in this video, but I'm going to try. This is what I've experienced. So I have my notes of the topics that I want to cover. I feel like this video could be all over the place, so I'm really going to try and edit this to make sense. The past few weeks have been an absolute whirlwind. So I have officially been here for three weeks and I'm truly loving it. It's been an adjustment for sure, but I know in my heart that I am where I'm supposed to be. A little bit of backstory, I'll try to keep it brief. All right, so how did I get to move to New York? Well, I have known for a while that I wanted to move to New York. If you're new, I interned in New York City my senior year of college, and I absolutely loved it. I didn't love it in the moment, but when I came home for the final semester of my college years, um, I quickly realized that I missed it a lot and upon graduation I thought I was going to have a job, I thought I was going to be moved away and I ended up staying home in South Carolina for a year after graduating. While I was home during the pandemic I had a lot of time to reflect on what I really wanted and I knew in my heart that I wanted to move back to New York. I still don't know how long I'll be here, but I knew that I wasn't finished. I didn't know how I was going to get back here, but I knew that I had a dream of coming back. So similarly to my internship experience when I was in college still, I applied to a lot of different places and I didn't hear back from a lot of them or I got a lot of no's. Um, same thing with a full-time job after graduating college. I interviewed a lot, I got a lot of no's, and then one job stuck. And when I got offered the job, my first day at work was two weeks from when I got my offer letter. So here we are, how to move to New York in two weeks. I didn't care what it was going to take. I didn't care about the finances which we will get to. Once I got my offer letter and once I accepted my job, it was go time. So now we're gonna branch out into the different topics of how I got here. Let's start with obviously, where was I going to live? To introduce this housing topic, I wanted to say that now is the time to move to New York City if you're looking to move to New York City. Now I say that because of the pandemic. Simple as that. Um, a ton of people have moved out of the city, like everyone who performed on Broadway. They're gone because Broadway isn't open. Um, there's a ton of other people that have moved out too, like maybe the city got too expensive because they were laid off during the pandemic or they wanted to move home for the pandemic. So many different scenarios. There is more housing available and 
they have cut rent fees a lot. New York real estate is in a league of its own. It's a big money making business up here. There's a lots of processes you have to go through. I'll get to those, but I wasn't really prepared for that. So here I am helping you out. Just to start off with the basics, what area was I looking to move to? So New York is big and there are many living arrangements, many options, many places that you can live. I knew that I didn't want to make a huge commute to work and I work in Manhattan. So when I interned like a year and a half ago, I lived in Midtown and I absolutely hated it. Funny enough, I live fairly close to where I lived last time, but the area that I live in is more residential, more neighborhoody. There's more restaurants, more local businesses, which I really like. And that was something that I was definitely looking for moving forward for this move to New York. At first I thought I wanted to move uptown. Um, I don't know uptown as much as I know midtown, um, but I was definitely looking at that. I was looking to live around Central Park to have a more like homey feel, I guess. And I didn't really want to live in lower Manhattan. East Village is a huge place for like younger residents. Um, definitely Midtown as well. I kind of wanted to move somewhere that I was most familiar with. I had the area that I wanted to live in down pat and then I had to move forward with actually finding an apartment. So if you're looking to move to New York, there is a website that all New Yorkers know as Street Easy, which is specifically New York real estate. Also, because I lived in South Carolina when I was apartment hunting, I couldn't physically get here to look at my different options. So on Street Easy, and there are different websites for finding apartments, but particularly on Street Easy, they offer virtual tours if you can't make it in person to see them. So I did that for a few places. Street Easy is so great because you can filter different options that you want in the place that you're looking for. Like um, you can do amenities, you can do price. So the price range that I looked in was between, I think started really low, like 1200 to 2000 ish. I really didn't want to go above 2000. I of course had to look at what I was going to be paid at my job and 2000 was at the very, very top of my budget. Some of the amenities that I was looking for was laundry in the building, not even in the unit, but in the building. It's considered a luxury apartment if you have laundry in your unit. Isn't that crazy? Um, laundry and building, I really wanted to have a doorman just for sense of security, being um, a young woman in New York City, you know, wanted that. Um, there was also like a package in a mail room so all of my stuff would be monitored when it came in. Also central air, refrigerator, freezer, dishwasher. As far as a shower went, I wasn't too picky. I personally have a stall shower, it doesn't have a tub. It's fine with me, right? Um, and then a decent closet. So what's really cool about the place that I got, it's partially furnished and it's a newer building, a newly renovated building. And I am the first person to live in this unit, which I really like as well. But when I say partially furnished, there's a bed frame. There wasn't a mattress. I was not okay with that. Um, what I'm sitting on now, this little bench futon couch thing, it's actually really comfortable. This came with it. At first I didn't love that option, but if I had gone with something else for the same price, I would then additionally have to tack on um, money to purchase new furniture. So rent wise, being completely, totally honest. Um, I would not be able to afford this place if there weren't a pandemic and prices were cut significantly. I don't really know what I'm going to do when this rent price goes up because um, I simply will not be able to afford it anymore. But being completely transparent, if there weren't such things going on, 
The net price of the unit I live in is $2,600. Um, I actually got it prorated and got four months free. There's a lot of places doing that right now just to try and get people to move into the city. So basically what that means is getting four months free. I don't know the exact equation, but they do like some subtracting, some dividing, and they apply that price to every single month. So instead of 2,600, I pay 1,900 a month, and then all of my utilities are included in a $165 charge. It's still so expensive. It is so, so expensive. I don't want to ignore that. It's expensive to live here. I didn't want all of my money to go toward rent, but honestly, what I am making at my job is my rent money. But also with that said, I do justify that price by what I'm getting. So I live in a studio, um, it's partially furnished, it's so nice, so chic, it's all black and white, it's all brand new, it's in a great area, and I genuinely love coming home to this place instead of coming home to a blow up mattress until I could actually afford to buy a bed. And I ultimately settled on this beautiful place. So let's talk a little bit about the finances of securing this apartment. This is just for securing the apartment. If you're like a big YouTube watcher, there are these sisters that live here in New York City. Their names are Michelle and Aline. They did a similar video, but I remember watching it and they said, if you're thinking of moving to New York City, you need to have as much money saved as possible. And I can't remember if it was like between five and seven thousand or like seven and ten thousand dollars. And they were right. They were absolutely right. And I wish I had saved more. But I think maybe having the last year off gave me the opportunity to save as much as I could. There's various fees that you have to pay when securing an apartment. There's probably different ones. Um, in New York versus like South Carolina. I know there are, just to name a few. There's application fees, there's also broker fees. I didn't have to pay any of those, which is nice. Um, there's like first month's rent, there's security deposit, there's a guarantor deposit if you have to have it. So personally, I had to pay a number of things. I had to pay an application fee, I had to pay first month's rent, and I also had to pay my guarantors. So what is a guarantor? I still don't fully know. I still haven't fully grasped the concept of this, but it's basically like insurance if I can't pay my month's rent. If you took the net rent of this unit and multiplied it 36 times, which is the guideline for this building, I could not afford to live here. So because I don't meet that guideline, I had to get a guarantor. If I can't pay my month's rent one month, they would pay it for me, but I would have to pay them back. So I have them for a full year. I will probably never use them, but I paid them pretty much $2,000 for that. They also covered my security deposit. And then I had to pay my first month's rent, which was another $2,000. So that was $4,000 gone out of my savings just to secure an apartment in New York. That's why I say, save as much as you can because enough will not be enough. But with that same token, it was worth me actually moving to New York and working for the company that I work for. So you kind of have to think about it that way. I really hope that I will make that money up somehow, some way. But right now for the first few months, um, I'm really going to be bumming it. Honestly, that is kind of the New York lifestyle. New York is expensive. A lot of people live here and a lot of people are living paycheck to paycheck and making their money stretch. I also want to normalize to having outside help while you're living here. I am paying my rent on my own. I'm paying my groceries on my own. Um, but you know, my mom will help me out every now and then. Like today, she sent me some sheets. 
Like that was great. That was so greatly appreciated. And if someone wants to help you out while you're first getting settled, um, I think that's completely normal. But also don't think it's completely impossible to do it on your own either because you just kind of have to like work with your finances, allocate money toward different things, what's priority, you know. Once I secured my apartment, it was go time with packing. And this is also a huge financial part that you need to think about if you're moving to New York. Um, are you going to hire movers? Are you going to drive? Are you going to ship everything? Are you going to fly to New York with some of your things? Are you going to order things when you get here? You really have to think about that. So in my situation, we packed up my life and we fit it in my mom's SUV as much as we could. And we drove from South Carolina to here. That was the least expensive option because if we hired movers, I believe you pay movers by the mile, too expensive. To me, it was worth driving a long while while just paying the gas fee. What do you need to bring with you? Honestly, avoid bringing furniture at all costs because furniture, they just put a damper on your day. They just make the workload a lot harder. It's big, it's bulky, it's heavy. Nobody wants to deal with that. So I would bring like the necessities, clothes. I have a few kitchen appliances and tools. Um, bedding, a mattress, a blow-up mattress, toiletries, and then bring some stuff that makes you happy and puts a smile on your face because I brought little knickknacks from home and whenever I see them I just think of home. It makes my space feel more like me and more personal and not like someone else's concrete cube. In my opinion, what's not necessary to bring you can always buy wherever you go. That's kind of what I did here. Like I couldn't bring a mattress, so I ended up ordering a box mattress from Amazon. Then bring sneakers and a positive attitude. New York is no joke. It's a fast paced lifestyle. It's an expensive life. It's a life that you have to live with thick skin. You fully have to rely on public transportation or walking when you're here. Expect to have some ramen noodle nights. You'll probably cry a little bit, but also you're gonna have the best time of your life. And make sure you have some kind of job when you get here or some source of income while you're here because money goes quick. I guess to end off this video, if you have got the guts, if you've got the willpower, if you have the mental stability to move to New York City, do it because you will not regret it. I've said this once before and I completely stand by it. New York changed me forever once I first moved here. I was not the same person when I got back home from it. It made me a tougher person. It made me appreciate all of the good things going on around me. It made me work harder. It made me be more ambitious and to strive for big things. And there truly isn't any other place like it. It is incredible. It is cultural. There's so much fashion here. There's so many cool people here. Different restaurants, shops, there's music, just so, so many different things. It is a melting pot of different things. And every day there is something new. I love that as well when not that there's anything against like living in the South or somewhere that's a little more slow paced because I think one day I would want to return back to that. But life is so not one sided here. Like you get to experience so many different things and New York isn't like set in its ways. I think until my late 20s, I will stay in New York. I don't want to be here forever. I think I can only take so much New Yorkness. I am a Southern girl. I lived in the South for 23 years of my life. Um, I think one day I will eventually head back down there, but I'm so excited to be here. I talked about this in one of my vlogs, but I was thinking about that movie, Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, the other day, 
and I remember being like eight or ten years old I don't remember how old I was but just thinking I want to be that girl I want to be that fashion queen who loves music who travels into the city all the time and looks so good while doing it with her best friend and not just that movie I had other dreams too when I was younger of being in New York and working in fashion and I'm just so grateful that I'm here and I'm living my childhood dreams. I wish I could tell younger me, like, you're gonna do it and you're gonna kill what you're doing. And honestly, I'm really proud of myself for everything that I've gone through to get here. So if I can do it, you can do it. You just have to have faith and take a chance and believe in yourself. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you have more specific questions or you want to address something that I didn't talk about in this video, please feel free to comment below or my DMs are always open on my Instagram at Madeline underscore hair. You can follow me there as well, but make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already. Ring the notification bell so you can be notified whenever I upload in the future and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.